and we're live or Hello. we're live now anyway um i am stephanie goldberg glazer i own live well travel often your luxury travel experts and i am here with tanya zafi who wrote this fabulous book which i'm going to show you <laughs> it's called all over the map it is a i have my little notes actually sorry um it's a memoir of her time spent on cruise ships and how she met her husband and it it really is a great love story that spans the entire globe well maybe except for antarctica but most of the globe <laughs> that's right <laughs> so um we're going to talk a little bit about the book life travel so stick around grab a cocktail and enjoy sounds great thanks for having me i'm so excited um so you are currently in you're in canada right you're based right. in canada Yes, Western? we live in BC. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. And when you start, when you, this book started, starts when you accepted a job on a cruise ship. That's right. So, and it sounds like you sort of got there by dumb luck. Yeah. I, <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's true. I, it kind of fell into my lap a little bit because I had moved from Alberta to Kelowna and I accepted a job to work at a hotel and I worked there six months and then I was going to get laid off and I was like oh my gosh what am I going to do and a friend of mine um suggested oh hey I know somebody that worked on a cruise ship once and I'd never heard of anybody working on a cruise ship we applied and we went for the interview and we got the job and we thought we were going to go to the cruise ship together it was all really fast and we didn't we were separated and um yeah but it was amazing I like I said, the job just kind of did fall in my lap a little bit. So I feel blessed for that. Good. And then you, you landed on the Regal Princess. And remind me where you started. Uh, I flew into Puerto Rico. Okay. And uh, yeah, we started and started on the Regal Princess. Mm -hmm. So it was my first day ever working on a cruise ship. And it ever seen one either because i'm in Kelowna, i'm in interior bc you know i'd never not vancouver where the port is and all that so anyways it was amazing the ship is massive it's beautiful and you get on the ship and you're kind of trying to find your bearings and getting lost but anyways and um yeah my first day on the cruise ship it was it was pretty spectacular <laughs> and you started you started working in the front and the guest relations so right. you you started with officer status that's right yes. yeah Yes. So you're considered explain what that means a little bit. Well, you're considered the proper title is junior assistant purser. And so you're a petty officer and you work in guest services. And there's a, quite a few different areas with the guest services that you can work in. Like at, you work at the front desk or uh, as I did, I was a secretary for the chief purser or the secretary for the captain and shore excursions mm -hmm. look, is that department as well. And so mm -hmm. is the casino and there's many different departments that you are able to work in right you did a little stint in the casino if i remember too i did at the end of my contract <laughs> yeah yeah i did which was amazing too because anytime you're in port the casino is closed so you right? have time off you have your time <clears throat> off yeah so yeah. it seems like right i've i've been on more cruises than i count can count as a passenger oh that's and amazing. it seems to me that people that work on cruise ships are probably the hardest working people on earth. Yeah. Right. You don't get a lot of time off. You know, yeah. I mean, so my perception is you don't get a lot of time off and you're, you're working a gazillion hours and you're doing all the things that need to be done. And you're running around in the interior corridors outside of the public's view. Um, but your first week was a little different than that. Uh, yes. My first week was, <laughs> which, which, um, is interesting because that's that's not normal and so you know and i i unknowingly didn't know anything different i'd never worked on a cruise ship so i just was like oh this is what they let you do they let you kind of go and explore the islands and get to know what you're doing no no that's not normally normally you throw your bags in your cabin and you're running and working so when we would tell people what we were doing myself and my roommate who joined the same day i did um they were flabbergasted they were like you were doing what today <laughs> right and you're the you're the new people on the totem pole like, yes yes we were new be running around saint thomas no. shopping i know it was almost like we were like oh they didn't know what to do with us because also when we arrived 
we were given a passenger stateroom. We had right. portholes and we had a queen bed and a dump and a bunk bed, but we didn't know that that wasn't quite normal until we found out a little bit later. But yeah, we lived in that cabin for about a month. So, so was it a bit of a culture shock when you went to the crew quarters? Uh, well, we didn't have our two portholes anymore, but, um, you know, it, our cabin was still a fair size. I felt like, okay. you know, it was the two, it was the bunk beds and everything, but we still had, you know, our a sitting area, not a huge one, but, you know, and a mini bar fridge and our own bathroom. And yeah, so it, it is. And it was just the whole experience anyways. So yeah and and even though when you're when we went to the um other cabin we still had um housekeeping because oh, they would come nice. to our yeah they would come to our cabins as well and then so we can pay them and we would tip them all the time mm -hmm. and then we could also send our laundry away mm -hmm. and pay, yeah so it was kind of not i'm not going to say not so different but it was we were still felt like we were living the life <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing um, yeah. so you talk about this book you go um to tell me about the time frame like when did you go work on the ship like what were you doing before and what I mean I know you were working in the hotel but is this yeah. before you went to travel school or is this after you went to travel school this is after I went to travel school I um went to I after high school I ended up taking travel consultant that was mm -hmm. where I went first and um that kind of ended up being fate right my destiny mm -hmm. like this is what led me to do all my travel because after i did that course then i went backpacking to australia with some mm -hmm. friends which was amazing experience that's a whole nother book though yeah you also <laughs> talk about a trip that you went to um costa rica and manuel antonio yeah. park yes that's right we did which we, i love by oh, the way gorgeous. love manuel antonio me too going it back is... next month amazing <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is beautiful there. Um, we did, and we went there with our uh, travel consultant program. And back then, it would we got a great deal. It was mm -hmm. so cheap. I think it was seventeen hundred or fifteen hundred dollars. I can't. It's in the book, but it was so cheap, and that was included with our, you know, echo tour of the lodge, Emmanuel Antonio, and we got to mm -hmm. explore. So that was kind of a the tip for you know taking the course and such. But uh, yeah, so that was amazing. So that was yes, the first trip with my travel group, but on my own was awesome. Australia mm -hmm. with friends backpacking. And so do you feel like those trips really gave you the bug, the travel bug? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. And I mean, even before that, I was always intrigued with travel when I was young and uh -huh. growing up and looking at places and dreaming, right? Right. Never knowing that it would be my reality. It was a dream, right? So and Australia was one of my first dreams, really. And when I did that at a younger age, it was like, I need a new dream now. <laughs> right. We've accomplished yeah. that goal. What's next? Yeah, exactly. Right. So, so yeah, I, mind you, I did never have working on a cruise ship in the realm of my vision, but I'm mm -hmm. so thankful that that came about because after I did go to Australia, then I worked at a couple resorts and such like a ski resort and a hot spring resort. And then that's what brought me out to Kelowna working in the hotel. And that's how mm -hmm. the whole everything got rolling so the big ball started amassing more and yeah. more and more <laughs> and i was thankful because after i finished my my contract on um, regal princess was six and a half months and then when i was wow. done the hotel took me back in the That's summer amazing. so i yeah i could go and come and it was yeah a dream i was living the dream <laughs> so your first day on the regal princess Yes. which by the way was the love boat this is this is just so i so our audience is clear this is not the same regal princess that is currently or not currently but sailing now right that is a new ship and this is a different ship yes. that has been retired so That's right. anyway yeah. your first day on the regal princess you get there you meet your over-the-top italian roommate <laughs> and yeah. you go out to the crew bar yes and you fall in love well, it was actually, <laughs> yeah, it's true. I did on my first day on the cruise ship, but it was even better than that because it was in the morning at 10 o'clock, we were told by our supervisor, we have to go to a uh, mandatory lifeboat drill. So we're in our uniforms, put on our life jacket, go to the lifeboat. Which is lifeboat. always a good look for everybody. Oh yeah, right, it's beautiful. <laughs> So we're at the lifeboat drill and there he was across the room and I, oh, who's that? And that was my love at first sight moment. And 
that's it was my first day I couldn't even believe it <laughs> so so cruise ships have a reputation for being mm -hmm. right places where sometimes people hook up a lot mm -hmm. often frequently yeah. not always with the same people and yeah. it's sort of a rotating thing right because it's a very small pool of people yes <laughs> it's not like you can go and hook up with passengers so mm -hmm. that's a big no-no um <laughs> if you want you to do your job yes exactly you would be sent home <laughs> right next on, port on your own off job. you go yes. right you, you pay for your own return ticket that's um right. so this was not this did not apply to you you were like blinders on pretty much this yeah. is the guy <laughs> yes yeah it was there was just something about him and he was so charismatic and he was from he was from austria and i was from canada and of course he was a good looking guy and just you know yeah and he was just so nice and personable i don't know yeah he he marked all those boxes for me so yeah so you go at the end of your contract right by the end of your contract you're already dating sort of or oh, yeah. you're dating oh, dating yeah. oh dating. yeah we're dating we're, we're in love okay <laughs> we so fell in love on the love boat <laughs> Of course you did. It's a little cliche, but I love it. But it's uh, true. <laughs> um, listen, my husband and I met at summer camp, so there's that. Oh my gosh, uh, that's amazing. That's a whole different recording. Um, so mm -hmm. your contract ends, you go home to Canada, you work at the hotel, and he goes to uh, back to Austria, or he goes to another ship. Yeah. No, he goes uh, back to Austria, mm -hmm. and on the ship, we kind of, you know, we were on the ship we were living the fantasy life and just the dream right. and always being in port and doing that but then it kind of came down to near the end of the contract oh, what are we gonna do like mm -hmm. it's kind of getting a little bit more serious so i just kind of threw it out there like if he would move to canada and i was you know he had to think about it a little bit but i was shocked when he said he would and i was like is he really gonna move to canada you know and right, then people what say happened? a lot of things yeah that's true right <laughs> like you know, I know we're in love, but you live in a, on another continent. So I thought, okay, we'll just see. And, and then let alone that. And then he goes home after his contract and tells his parents he's going to move to Canada. Like they must be like, you're crazy. Right. So he did, he went home after his contract and they supported him and us. And he packed his bag and flew one way ticket to Canada. And mm -hmm. he moved here as we thought. <laughs> and then, what, yeah, and then that was what we thought. And we went, um, he was here for eight days and we went camping and, um, eight days. He, eight so days. he moves. I'm, I'm just going to put this into perspective for people that might be listening. I, he picks up from Austria. He tells his parents, by the way, I met a girl. So off I go to Canada and um, see you later. And I'm there for eight days. And then? And then he was in an accident and uh, he broke his jaw. And it was so surreal, unbelievable. I couldn't even And when you move to another country, you don't necessarily have all the health insurance and all of, all of the boring details yeah, of everyday life. Yeah, it's so true. And um, so he was here and and uh, then in the hospital and it just seemed like things were getting worse and we were going to have to pay some possibly some medical bills and dental bills and such. And it was like, OK, maybe you're going to have to go home, get this sorted out and um, then you can come back. We were mm -hmm. thinking a couple months he can come back. And he went home to Austria uh, after being in Canada 30 days now. And uh, they were like, checked him out. What? what were they doing in Canada? They should have maybe taken out these teeth and it was mm -hmm. infected. It just wasn't a good situation. They rebroke his jaw. Yes. And so he had to go through the whole thing again in the hospital. And so that just kind of set forth what happened next. We didn't see each other. He came for a visit a year later, was lacking money because he spent all, you know, wasn't working and right. nothing. Yeah. So reality. And so he went back on the cruise ship and he was, um, sometimes if you're a couple, you could maybe go work on the same cruise mm -hmm. ship. However, he was um, covering people that were on vacation. So he was flying So he had around. to go wherever they sent him. Yep. And he was sometimes two weeks here and sometimes oh, a month here. So I couldn't go and right. be with him. I'm like, well, no, I'll stay on land. I'll do the land thing. And uh, and then I I didn't see him for uh after he came uh, after the cruises he came just for that visit and then after that i didn't see him again for two years <laughs> and and then there there was a little blip where 
you met somebody else who was clearly wrong for you. Clearly, I mean, yeah. listen, I knew that from page one of this story in your book, but <laughs> in hindsight, I'm sure you did too. Yeah, is it? Yeah, for sure. I mean, and this is later on. This is after me and Joseph had been back and forth for I don't know how long, right? Um, uh, so it was, I didn't see him for two years and then I saw him and we had a fantasy vacation and then it was two years after that. Mm -hmm. But yes, eventually I did meet somebody because it was like, um, me and Joseph, he's, he's a continent away. I'm in Canada, maybe, and my friends, you know, they were always supportive of me, but they're like, maybe you should give this Canadian guy a chance. He lives in the same place you do. <laughs> you know, I couldn't mm -hmm. deny that. And I just, oh, okay, I will. And, you know, I tried, but um, it, it, yes, there was certain things. It wasn't right. So between, okay, spoiler alert, they ended up getting married, right? Yeah. So from the time you met on the regal princess yes. so the time you got married how much time had elapsed 10 years oh jesus really yeah. oh we met in 1997 and we got married in 2007. um so was, yeah you talk about i'm going to come back to the wedding in a second but you talk about yeah. you go over to austria yeah right for the last time before he moves to canada That's right. and um this is one of my favorite things because I feel like sometimes um, you go places and you don't speak a language. And so things get a little weird. Um, yeah. <laughs> you took a job not speaking German, which yeah. is amazing. And yeah. somehow they hired you and somehow people still were nice to you. Um, but, um, you know, you go places and you say things and then you think you know the right words and then you don't and things go horribly wrong. And mm -hmm. so, the night of the Krampuses. Yes, that was. <laughs> he gave you a little catchphrase to say so they wouldn't whip you, right? So <laughs> yes, ich bin Spangler. And I, I had never known of a Krampus tradition in my life. If you've never been able to experience it, you need to. It is just, it's okay. amazing. So it's a whole thing in itself, but I'd never heard of this. So um, the night of my, uh, well, not, I was going to say my husband, but um, my boyfriend at the time just said, there's going to be all these crumpuses. It's going to be hundreds of them. And it's a Christmas tradition where they kind of are wearing a, a furry um, costume and it's half goat and a mask and everything, half goat, half demon. So it's, it's something to see, right? <laughs> and they have a whole festival. So they go around and try to scare you into being good for Christmas is the, what it is. So uh, he said they whip and they kind of have fun with it, but you know, later on as the night goes, they can get a little carried away so mm -hmm. they can whip you kind of hard with the tree branches or the, or the tails. So anyways, uh, he said, just say, ich bin schwanger. they'll leave you away, leave you alone. I said, okay. And, uh, and so then later out. in the day you're drinking, oh, right? Yeah. And you say yeah. to someone, I can't it say it. And I'm having right. my drinks and my glue wine and we're going on and all this and just having a good party, right? We're enjoying mm -hmm. the moment. Mm -hmm. And uh, we even carry on and we end up at his restaurant and having shots and schnapps and, you know, <laughs> uh, and we end up with all the crumpuses, me and my friend of all people, you know, they go mm -hmm. to his restaurant. That's a tradition. I didn't know that either, but we carried <laughs> on there and went there with them. But um, so then the next day I went to work. And uh, one of my coworkers said to me, oh, that was out with us the night before. Oh, so ich bin Schwanger? And I was, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, do you know what that means? And I said, no. And he said, when are you and Joseph having your baby? And I was like, oh my, what? I know. I am not pregnant. I was like, oh my goodness. I, I was saying, and then it went back. I was saying this last night and I'm drinking my- Like as you're having shots. Yeah, and shots. And I'm like- Very oh. responsible. Yes, yes. But, <laughs> and I'm like, I'm not having a baby. So then when I went home to Joseph, I was like, why did you tell me that? And he was like, and why didn't you tell me what it meant? And he was just like, gave it a laugh. And he's like, well, it kept them away, didn't it? Well, it sure did. They they left me alone. They were like, okay, she's pregnant. Let's leave her alone. <laughs> but always find out what you're saying. Yeah, right it's, and, and, you know, pronunciation matters. And After that, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Do you speak German? 
No. Oh, okay. I speak not a word. No. You know, funny thing. We were um, just a little side. We were in Germany a couple of years ago and we were, um, we had a tour. We we're going to river cruise and we had a tour and the, the tour guide came and she starts counting people. I, I whatever on and on. Yeah. And I was like, I, I smacked my husband. I was like, wait, I know this. How do I know how to count in German? Cool runnings, the movie oh, where wow. they're counting and they're doing the bobsled. Cause they want to be like the yeah. Austrians. Yeah. That's how I knew it. No. And it was all what? somewhere in the back of my head, but that's the only German I know. That's amazing <laughs> how it comes back, right? Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. So have you experienced a Krampus? No. Oh. Not yet. Oh yes, you have to. Yeah. It's fun. It's and, fun. And uh, I will make sure none of my hairs or my gray hairs are showing when I use your tagline. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> they'll, they'll stay away um so you went to Austria and you lived there for on a on a work visa or tourist no. visa no no I was there less than six months so less I didn't have okay yeah yeah so I so you could stay there less than six months and um yeah. so why did you why did he move to Canada and you didn't stay in Austria well I I was like, uh, I don't speak the language. And it was just, okay. I just it, I had a hard time with coming together with that. And it would just be so much harder, I think for me, because I didn't mm -hmm. speak the language. And mm -hmm. then your family comes into play and your family mm -hmm. doesn't live there. And then you think that, and at the same time, when I say that it's hard because I was expecting him to leave his right. family, <laughs> you know, but I don't know, he just, um, and he spoke English. It just seemed like it was maybe going to be easier for mm -hmm, him. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, so I I went there and and I stayed there with him because we were he was applying for his permanent residency and we thought oh he'll get it he's a skilled worker and he speaks he English. checks all the boxes yeah yeah like you know kind of naively thinking and then so uh, when after Christmas in January when we received the letter from um, the embassy he we're opening it up all excited. We're going to be moving to Canada soon. And we open it up and he was denied. He was missing five points. They do it on a point system. Oh, he needed 65 points and he missed five points. It was like, how is that even possible? Yeah. And then it kind of hit me and, you know, and, and just, just being there and on my own and not speaking language, it hit me even more. And I was like, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, he's never going to be able to move to Canada. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, and then drama and then I wasn't thinking straight and didn't maybe have great communication with him and I uh, panicked and I stayed for a while longer but I ended up coming home <laughs> don't, don't you think that most of the world's problems stem from yeah. lack of communication yeah. yeah you know and and it's so true and isn't it it's like you know, let's just communicate you know and I should have been yeah more open and and but when I did tell him some of my feelings he kind of was going to support me and that surprised me too right I'm not, mm -hmm. not blaming him but I felt like you should have been like wake up this is what we're going to do and stay <laughs> here and you know let's not panic but um that's not what happened and so I and then I we panic back. yeah and then I panicked and panicked even more and then flew you know booked my flight and flew home so um yeah and we didn't really know what was going to happen and uh yeah, where unknowingly, fast forward, he, um, there was some time apart and some time, it, it was almost like we broke up a little bit. What were we doing? And, you know, mm -hmm, he ended up mm -hmm. dating somebody else too. And, you know, I, I broke his heart and mm -hmm. I didn't completely know everything about that. You know what I mean? Like he was kind of a little closed off to me a little bit. And then, um, right. yeah, but then eventually he reapplied, like we came back together talking more, but we're still, mm -hmm. you know, two continents away. And uh, yeah, it's so hard. I can't do a drive. I can't drive by his house or grab him for a coffee or anything. Right. right. So yeah, it's email or it was telephone. So anyways, but um, he, he reapplied and mm -hmm. the next time he did get his permanent residency. So there that's why he moved <laughs> and so you are now an expert in all things logistics right like how to get how to get people all over the world together how to import a motorcycle to canada how to do <laughs> all those things right yeah <laughs> there are so many different things that you just don't even think of right because yeah he he um 
yeah, brought a lot of stuff with him on, mm -hmm. you know, in a container and shipped it over. And one of them was his custom made Harley that he shipped over. Right. And so and then there it, were some problems getting it in. Oh yeah. I don't know <laughs> any problems where they, there, there was one problem. There was dirt on the tire. We were told that we weren't going to have any problems, but that there was dirt on the tire. There's and dirt on the tire yeah, of a motorcycle. Country. Yes. Yes. And they, they weren't going to let it in the country. And then I got over that hurdle and then they were saying it wasn't made in state. I don't even know. So eventually they, and then they said, you're going to have to export that bike or we will burn it. They said those words. I was like, what? I just, I couldn't believe it. Eventually I got a person that said yes. And I went with it and I carried on all the phone calls and um, we got it in. <laughs> Don't you feel like all of these logistical hurdles that you've crossed in the past, I don't know, 25 years or so yeah. have yeah. made it so you can pretty much do anything? Yeah, it can take on the world. But yeah, you yeah. know, it just seems like, yeah, it's just been interesting when all these little things, it's like, oh, it's just the motorbike. But no, it was every little thing about it, you know, and just being persistent and being patient. And then, you know, and yeah. Persistence and patience, I think, are half the battle for pretty much everything that we do. Right. Yeah. And if yeah. I could lit, I, I I'm pretty good at the persistence part, the patience, I have a little, little ways to go, <laughs> long ways to go. <laughs> so, so I have a couple of other questions for you. Sure. Um, you did a couple of tours on different cruise ships and different cruise lines. What, what was your favorite port that you went to as, um, just like, as a crew member, like it's fun to be crew member here because, and also just your favorite place because it's a fun place. Well, I would say my favorite place as a crew member was going to the Dead Sea. Oh. Because it was gorgeous. It was beautiful. I would have never been able to go to the Dead Sea and experience that if I did not work on the cruise ship. Mm -hmm. You know, so it was a tour that I took, um, which was amazing. And it is just beautiful. It's something to see. And we went to the Masada first and it mm -hmm. was just it, something I'd never experienced. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. same with that. Oh, and you went my... on, you went on a tour from the ship. So you were treated like a passenger, right. And you had yeah. a room at the hotel. And so you could yes. fill out. We, we were like <laughs> given a key, me and my girlfriend that went, that I worked at the front desk with, they gave us, we went with the passengers on the bus. And then mm -hmm. when we got to the, uh, to the Dead Sea, they had given all the passengers keys to a hotel room and, you know, you can change mm -hmm. and get ready and all this. And, and we got one too. We were like, <laughs> wow, <laughs> we so, were treated like a passenger. That's amazing. What do you think? Um, so funny thing, here's a funny thing for you. We were mm -hmm. at, uh, we were on a cruise several years ago. And we stopped in St. Bart's and we got off the ship and we strolled along to Shell Beach, which is just about 10, five, 10 minute walk from, from where the cruise leaves you, from where the tender yeah. leaves you. And, um, and we saw some of the bartenders from our ship on the, the beach. So yeah. we went over to the bar and we brought over a tray of beers for them because it was their day off too. And, everyone, and so <laughs> this woman looks at me and she goes, is this how it feels to be a passenger on Seaborn? I was like, yeah, it kind of <laughs> is. It was oh so God. nice. That's um, so awesome. That was so nice of you, right? And to recognize that too. <laughs> everybody works hard, right? She's bringing me drinks all the time. It's sort of the least I can do. Um, so, nice. so you kind of went into the first contract with no idea of what you were getting into. No uh, idea the next couple you had more of an idea of what was going on so what do you think people would find to be the most surprising things about being a crew member on a cruise ship well people actually think you get a day off they're like you <laughs> must get a day off you're like no i get like I three don't. hours off yeah like i work six and a half months every single day there is not a day off and they just really can't believe that really and um lots of it is split shifts that you work so that you do have your time in the afternoon where you could go if you're in port you can go in port and do whatever you mm -hmm. want mm -hmm. um it really does depend what you do on the cruise ship though yeah uh because for my position i worked about 56 hours a week and uh Which is not bad no, when you break that down, it's not bad at all. And then my husband, then boyfriend, uh, was a pastry chef and he worked about a hundred hours mm -hmm. a week. And I, that is so it's mind blowing. 
yeah, I don't know if I could do it. I'll, I'll be yeah. honest. Like he's yeah. a hardworking guy and those yeah. they're hardworking people. Right. I'm not saying I didn't work hard right? <laughs> sometimes. Well, but, there's a um, difference between working hard and like killing yourself. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's in. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, um, however he did make more money than me. Right. But, well, um, okay. yeah. And As he well should. should be. Yeah, exactly. But, um, he, uh, yeah. And he would always, we would find the time in port where we could meet up and mm-hmm. my schedule was a little bit more flexible than his so that we could meet up and stuff. And he was just always go, go, go. <laughs> and that's how come why, when you're work on your done, your contract on the cruise ship, you're so tired after you're constantly on the go. Mm-hmm. Like you work hard, you play hard. Yeah. And then, so after you're like, I'm going to sleep for about a week or so. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. So you've been to a lot of places, probably a lot more places than most people travel to. Yeah. So where is the one place that you haven't yet been that you're dying to go? Oh, I would love to go to Tahiti or mm-hmm. Bora. Yeah. yeah. Or yeah. Fiji. Yeah. yeah. Yes somewhere down there in the south pacific there's yeah cook islands like some just i would a cruise down there would be amazing yeah (laughs) Yeah, there are some nice ones actually (laughs) there's some really nice options um so you have so after you so you got married right in 2007 yeah and you got married in canada and then you Mm -hmm. also had a wedding in austria we did right yeah because after this long of trying to figure out the logistics you should have as many weddings as you can we should we <laughs> should have definitely two weddings and um yeah it was uh we both had in the ca- canadian wedding was a small intimate wedding with mm-hmm. just family because then it was like well if your family came to canada they can't speak english and it just seems like it wouldn't make sense and we're not going to be able to be with them the whole time mm-hmm. so let's get married in Austria too. So it was, I was game for that, of course, right? Who wouldn't be wearing your right. wedding dress twice and you know, everything. <laughs> and the weddings were three weeks apart. So oh. they literally planned the, my, um, Austrian in-laws, they planned everything. We just showed up, you know, Joseph fantastic. had a little bit of say in such, but we just, right. we, what bride just shows up to the wedding. That's fantastic. <laughs> Oh yeah. I didn't know anything. And they live in a small town, Mm -hmm. very sweet, right in the Alps. And, um, it's a village really. And, um, they went all out, like they got the horse and carriage and they, we went to the, um, castle and, you know, did all the pictures and everything and, um, had the fireworks. And then in the book too, where they have another interesting tradition. uh, Oh, right. Yeah. Right. They kidnap you. Yes, the stealing of the bride. What? Which, I read yeah. that. I was like, this can't be a thing. It's a thing. It is a thing. And I <laughs> had no idea. I So, bride, I show up to the reception. We come our horse and carriage and up and waving through town. And we show up to the reception. Right. You're like Cinderella. Yeah, Cinderella. And we had our own Austrian band that we had. So, they're playing outside. And we're kind of having a dance outside before we walk into... um the reception um, area and uh, me and Joseph are dancing and his friend cuts in and is dancing with me and the friend's wife is dancing with Joseph. And so he's dancing with me, but dances me towards a car. (laughs) And then I'm like, okay, what are we doing? And all these guys are running to the car. They're all jumping in. We're piled in there and there's, I don't know how many of us and none of them are speaking English and we're driving away from the reception. I'm kind of like, well, where are we going? And they the just wedding back there. Yeah, like I, you know, where's Joseph? Is he coming with us? Are we what are we doing? They're dying laughing. We drove for I don't know, you know, I don't know how long, 15 minutes, 20, I don't know. And uh, you know, then we, they took us to a pub and mm-hmm. uh sat down and we ordered drinks and charcuterie board. And I, I just which seems still... a little odd since you're supposed to be at your own <laughs> wedding. <laughs> at the reception. <laughs> yeah, so I was like, I still was like, what is going on? And then so finally, one of the guys that kind of speaks a little bit of English, he's like, okay, he told me about the tradition where um, it's a tradition for the guys to steal the bride and the girls steal the groom and they go somewhere to a restaurant or pub and the bride goes to a restaurant or pub and the maid of honor and the best man are supposed to find the bride and the best man finds the groom. And uh, then they take you back to the wedding. This could take hours. It could take two, one, two, three. I 
okay. So I, I went with it. I went with the moment. I was having fun. You I don't just really have a choice. Them. I mean, you've already been kidnapped to a pub. I didn't have a choice, but I, I just couldn't even believe this. And then, so anyway, so we were there, we were there two hours and oh my, my maid, of, yeah, my maid of honor came with my mother-in-law and part of our Austrian band and they mm-hmm. found us and we had a little dance and a little, you know, uh, you know, cheers prost. And, um, then we went back to the reception uh-huh. and then at that point, Joseph was back too. And, you know, we met up with each other and I was just like, Oh my gosh. And he's like, I am so sorry. I, I didn't know that they would kidnap you. And I was like, I, I was laughing. I was just like, I'm glad you didn't tell, like, I was like, it's okay. It was the best fun ever. I couldn't wipe the grin off my face. And I was glad he didn't tell me. Otherwise I would have, it, it just was a whole different experience, not knowing. Right. It's an interesting tradition, that's for sure. <laughs> so <laughs> I just I can't even imagine. So um, has your German gotten any better? Oh yeah, in <laughs> Deutsch. You know, I uh, I yes, we're working on it, and mm-hmm. we still are, but uh, it's a hard language. Yeah, it is. And now Joseph and I, we have two kids, and mm-hmm. um, that are eleven and twelve, and so me and the kids are learning it as well, but they have that Austrian roll of the tongue. I don't, (laughs) they'll, they'll say things. They're like, you're saying that wrong. And I try, but um... (laughs) listen, they have to have something to mock you for. So, and if that's it, you're doing good. That's true. That's true. (laughs) But you know, it's, yeah, it's pretty awesome. But when we go there too, um, his parents don't speak English. His dad mm-hmm. speaks no English. His mom speaks about as much English or I do German or, you know, she's kind of has some, but, um, and we have some wine and we just have fun and, yeah, you know, yeah. and Joseph's an amazing translator. And then nowadays with technology, yes, you can it's much yeah. easier, much, yeah. much easier. Yeah. So, so um, before we wrap up, I just want to say, I just want to ask you a couple other questions, right? So, we know that crew members work really, really hard, but there's got to be a few good things about it too, right? Okay, so besides oh. meeting your husband, because um, we're, we're going to just as- assume that's the best part. What What is the best part for normal people who don't meet their spouse on a cruise ship? Or maybe they do, but what's the best thing about working on a cruise ship? Like, why should people do it? Well, I just think it's such a an amazing opportunity. It was essentially paid travel for me. Yeah. You know, yeah. and also... Um, like your, your foods have paid for your mm-hmm. accommodations paid for. So essentially you can save all your money. You're just needing your spending money. Right. And for me, I was from Canada and so I'm getting paid in us dollars. So it was even better. Oh, I bad. didn't that's have, great. yeah, you don't have to pay rent at home. So it's yeah. And then you're, and then you're paid travel. Like, mm-hmm. you know, you take advantage of the time that you have off. Yeah. It'll be a lot of work, but, and the amazing friends you meet too. Mm-hmm. And are you Not, still in touch with some of the people that you were oh, yeah. on your first ship with? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. And yeah. Savina just texted me, um, last night and her manager now was reading the book and she's like, Oh my gosh, my manager is reading. The book. <laughs> <laughs> and her manager said, Oh, so is all that stuff are you Savina? Is all that stuff true? And she's like, oh, no, she must be talking normal. about someone else. <laughs> Poetic license. <laughs> yeah. Cause she's like, was like, you know, a little wild and free, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> but you know what? This is 20s. Right. I know it, this is interesting fact though. Um, I had her as a roommate. And then after that, my next roommate was an Austrian girl. Uh-huh. Um, and all three of us met our significant others on that cruise ship wow yes and and so and they're um, both also still together yes wow yeah. right it really and, is the love uh, boat it really that's right it, we called it the cabin of love it's the love boat <laughs> cliche but it's true exactly. so yeah it just kind of it just kind of lasts so she actually lives in my italian roommate lives in florida okay yeah and uh my austrian roommate lives in england with her oh. husband yeah but amazing right it's amazing. just interesting yeah so so people have to read this book it's it's really you know it's called all over the map it's a memoir by tanya zoffy and you can buy it which you should on yes. amazon maybe amazon yes okay. buy yes. the book on amazon read it and think about your next cruise and hopefully by the time you're thinking about your next cruise cruises are going again so I know. Thank you so much for joining me. 
Oh, thanks for having me. I appreciated talking to you. I really loved it. And uh, yeah, it's great. And it's also now for the book, it's a nice time for an escape. Too, yes. When yes. we can't Read travel and putting the Read dreams the in our head of exactly. maybe where we want to go when we can. So yeah, <laughs> exactly. Read the book.